Welcome to the podcast where relationships, confidence, and determination all converge into an amazing heartfelt experience. This is Speaking from the Heart. Welcome back to episode number 40 of Speaking from the Heart. Today we have Jen Dussart who will be joining us on the show. Now Jen is not your average personal trainer. She has worked with clients to achieve something bigger than just the number on the scale, and she helps anyone develop true confidence, which includes a deep knowledge about body, energy, and strength clients did not even know that they had. In short, her goal is to bring happiness, confidence, balance, freedom, and a brand new friend. With Jen, she actually works one-on-one with people along with her staff to take a deep breath and begin with a very first step in their fitness journey as it unfolds, which her mission, which is really a big part of what we talk about in today's episode, is about her heart and believing that her clients can believe in themselves. While working out is the catalyst for her happiness, Jen's focus is on fostering joy in people's lives. Her business, located in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, has adapted the practice of being accessible also, providing virtual training sessions so that she can assist anyone anywhere in the world. She has a son, which she talks a little bit about, who is 20 years old, has made the dean's list, and is almost a junior at Gettysburg College, where he would like to be an attorney for the NAACP. I think that this is really one of those guests that represent and embody the opportunities that Speaking from the Heart has provided and even has shown for so many different people of what it takes to be able to create not only the people that we truly care about, but even the influences of the people that we truly care about. With that, let's go to the episode. All right, we're here with Jen Dussart. Jen, thanks for sharing your heart with us today. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here tonight. I have to tell you, the audience this just from the get go. Jen was one of those people that instantly right away reached out to me and said, I fit everything that you're looking for on this. I really <laughs> want to be part of this. Will you please, 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 please. I got something <laughs> really interesting to share that I think your audience would really love. And I'm like, sold <laughs> to the highest bidder <laughs> so, yeah i'm not really sure i gave you an option <laughs> no you didn't but you know what those are the people that i know have a very authentic story and have a lot to share so i want to say thank you from the forefront with just our conversations that we've had even beforehand but jen i want to start off by asking this question because i've already let the audience know about what you do your business and everything i want to ask you what got you started as being a personal trainer in the first place? Because I know we've had some conversations. You showed me a photo. I'm not going to really go into that photo right now because I'm sure that you can describe it for our audience. But what led you down that path? So oddly enough, I never thought this was anywhere I would end up after high school bounced around for a little while, did some odd jobs, ended up getting married and having a son. And was a stay-at-home mom for eight years, which was amazing. The absolute highlight of my life. My son is now 20 and I could go all day about him. He is just fantastic. But when he was like three or four years old, we joined the local YMCA and I started taking a kickboxing class. I had been athletic in high school, had been a swimmer, was actually like pretty good at it. But, you know, life took over. Partying was a lot of fun and food was good. So I ate a lot of fast food. I didn't have very good eating habits. And unfortunately, here as a mom now, I'm trying to figure out how to feed my family. We go to the Y. I start taking a kickboxing class. And for about the first six weeks, I marched in the back of the room while everybody else did the class. But the reason that I stayed was there was the instructor, her name was Karen, and she took an interest in each and every person in that room. And she asked about your stories. She learned your name. She learned about your family. She noticed if you weren't there, asked if you were on vacation. But for me, she stood in the back of the room with me. I'm probably going to cry for half of every class in the beginning because I couldn't do it. 
I knew I needed to do something, but I was so out of shape. I couldn't do it. And so oddly enough, over the first couple of months and then years, I started to become more fit. My eating habits were still an issue, but I got pretty athletic and fit again. She needed to get a job. And so she needed a full-time job for her family. So I mentored with her to become a part-time instructor for her class, just to sub from time to time and fill in when she had to go to work. I fell in love with teaching. I can remember as a kid, and my dad has been deceased for about 20 years now, but we made a bet when I was a kid for a dollar that I would be a teacher when I was a grown up. He was like, there's no way you're going to be a teacher. And I'm like, I don't know. I am. And it's not the conventional kind, but my whole mission and passion in my life and in my business is to take every big mistake I've made, every life lesson that I have learned, and I only learn things the hard way. And be so awkwardly transparent and vulnerable to share it with other people, to show them that, look, you can absolutely do it, right? Just like the conversation we had about your friend who may not be somebody who would think is fitnessy now, but hey, five years from now, who knows? I started my career as a computer programmer. And then after being a stay-at-home mom, my skill set was obsolete. So I had to do something else. So stay-at-home mom started as a fitness instructor Thank goodness for Zumba Fitness. I have that personality that I fill a room and I can lead a whole bunch of people. And so I got trained to lead that and for years had a super great time teaching classes in this area with great instructors and people mentored me, people took me under their wing. I had to get continuing education credits in this industry. That's something you have to do every two years to keep your certifications current. So One of the things that I could do was to take the personal trainer certification and that would keep my group fitness certification current, but also give me something else. I didn't realize at the time I was starting this path of layering one thing on top of the other to build this empire that I am excited about building in my life right now. Once I took the personal trainer exam and passed it, amazingly flying colors, not amazingly, but I had amazing flying colors on it. (laughs) I fell into working in this other guy's personal training studio and he saw my work ethic and he saw my just desire to help people and work with them. And so he mentored me on the business side of the personal training studio. And that's what makes me a little different. We are one-on-one. It's just one trainer and one person or possibly two people. Like if you and your friend want to come or mother, daughter, we do have some things like that, but we don't have open gym hours at all. It's all one-on-one with a trainer. He took me under his wing, showed me the ins and the outs. And I was with him for about five or six years. And I just, I felt, I love people. I'm on this earth to love God and love people. And I know that without a doubt. And look, I don't ever mean to throw God in anybody's face, but my faith is everything. It is the only thing that I get up for every day. And so I know it's not my job to convince anybody of anything, but it is my job to tell the story of what he has done for me. And I am somebody that should have been dead in a ditch somewhere many times over in my life because I only knew how to make bad choices. But since I get up every day and I give him the credit first and I say, lead me, guide me, make me better today than yesterday, I am killing it in this life. And I know it's not me. The people that know me know I'm just a schlep who's like trying to do good, right? But I have a huge heart for people. And that's what I fell in love with in this industry. I learn people's stories. I get to celebrate the birth of their grandchildren and the graduations of their kids. And I train their kids from high school to college and I watch them become grownups. And my son will tell you, and I shared this with you in our, one of our texting, I want to be everyone's mom. It's just who I am, right? I want everybody to have love and joy and happiness and life is so hard, but we don't have to live in the hard. And I'm just the quirky rainbow sunshine girl that says it's okay to live different right it's okay to have joy despite shitty circumstances i will say this from what you just shared first off there's no judgment here and i've always said to guests and i've even said to my listeners that this is all about how people get through the walks of life and it doesn't matter 
what you've had to do to overcome that, whether you have believe in God, whether you don't believe in God and you're listening to this. I know that for many people, we all have different backgrounds, but that's what makes this show special in that we all have unique paths of how we gotten to become great or greater than we ever thought possible, to become the best versions of ourselves. So, Jen, I want to say that I had a guest not all that long ago that talked about his journey and how he's gone through that, especially with his religious faiths to be able to push through, especially with a lot of adversity. And to hear you say that and just I feel that passion. I feel that love. Are there days where you get up and you say, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, I just feel really drained because some people giving yourself quite a lot can be very tiresome. And I know that for many, that can be a struggle. I know for me, sometimes I'm an introvert by nature. So I'm like, I got to step back here for a second and take a chill pill because it's really helping me to become able to help others. And I've learned how to adapt to that. But for you, how do you adapt to that? Do you feed off of other people? How's that work for you? There's a lot of different sides to that question. In 2018, I opened my first personal training studio on my own. And now I have relocated to what is my second. I am not somebody who thought I could ever do this. This is not something I ever went and looked for. This all very much grew organically. So on the business side of all of this, as an entrepreneur, as a woman owning my own brick and mortar business now, I feel like a fish out of water every single day. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's all reactionary. I mean, I'm getting better, but the thing that I show up for every day are the people that trust me with their lives. I see anywhere from 10 to 20 people every single day that I know are excited to come see me and I get to come to this beautiful place that I have created where I have a nice office and a beautiful training floor and there's a big plant wall and tons of windows out front and I bring my dogs to work with me. Every half hour, it's a new person, right? And it's all very social and I am such a social person. I have so much love to give people whether they want it or not. (laughs) (laughs) Right. It's funny because like I said, I never set out to do this, but I'm all about people recognizing what their gifts are. And we all have such different gifts. And when we use them together, it's so beautiful. And so a big piece of what I'm passionate about is teaching people the difference between fitting in and belonging. Mm. When you're trying to fit in, you're trying to be like everybody else and force yourself into something that you're not and you feel awkward and it doesn't feel good. And whether that is the food choices that you make, the people that you hang out with, whatever, whatever, everybody has their stuff. But when you learn that it feels really good to belong, it's because you love yourself. You love your own company. You are what I call joyful contentment, right? I might not have everything I want. I might not be who I want, but I have lights and running water. I have somebody I can text if I have a problem. We are so very fortunate and there's so many little tiny ways we don't see that. And going through some very dark times, as I know you have, those people who have reminded me, hey, mom, Would you be this upset that your girlfriend broke up with you if you were living in Haiti after the hurricane and you had to go search for food? Your 18-year-old kid says that to you and you're like, oh, wow, right? Like, I guess that does help put it in perspective that this is big and it does hurt and we can process those things and that's never a bad thing. I think the thing that I want people to understand is that when you allow anything to bring you to the point where you want to give up, you forget what you have already, right? You have a heart that beats and air in your lungs. I don't care if it's hold the door for someone else, you may change their day and you'll never even know it. But if you're not here, and you're not participating in life, you miss so many opportunities. 
I wonder about that too, because you're right. I have talked about that quite extensively in many of my episodes where I focus on not only the things that I have been through personally, but the struggles to have that self-actualization, right? So fans of the Maslow and his hierarchy of needs would certainly relate to that. And it fits very well with our conversation that we're having because to me, Sometimes finding that sort of small thing to latch on to, to just say, this is where I feel content and feeling joy. And I even had another business owner that kind of talked about this as being what I feel happy about. And you are essentially saying to me that this is what you get your happiness from, is seeing those other people's successes. Absolutely. I- Without a doubt. Yeah. Look, even in the worst days, I have the best life in the whole world. The choices I've made in my past and then this journey that I've been on this last five years, I didn't even know other people knew about this whole, like, be your best self, show up and be the best version of yourself, right? When your thing popped up, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't (laughs) wait to meet this guy. I talked about it with all my clients know my whole life. I'm such an open book. Everybody knows everything. I wanted to say, first off, for those that are clients of Workout with Jen, hi. Uh, it's really <laughs> glad to meet you through this yeah. podcast. You might get some emails in the next few days. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I might believe it. But, you know, let me pivot back for a second because you were saying to us earlier about your previous career being a computer programmer. My curiosity question that kind of filtered up when you were talking about that was, what led to you changing careers because was it and i'm more specifically tying into the computer programmer because you've shared a lot about what you got started with fitness and i really appreciate that because we all have a starting point somewhere that kind of motivates us but was there initial ambition back then as to why you did that and why you thought that was an ideal career path because i know for some people it can be very tough to pivot midway through and think, well, I'm going to do a complete 180 on my career. And I've had a lot of people that are interested in that sort of thing. So can you share your experience about that? Absolutely. After high school, I tried a couple different things. I was working at some local restaurants and I tried beauty school. And then in my early 20s, I ended up going to Computer Learning Network. They had a nine-month technical program, and then they help you with job placement and writing your resume and things like that. So I had some very elementary skills in the computer programming area, and so I got my first job. And just from there, worked up into some other positions in that industry. This was all before the dot-com world came out, which is going to date me even more than you. Um, I I do remember (laughs) Y2K. (laughs) I was already working many, many years when Y2K came around. I enjoyed that profession quite a bit. And the interesting thing that we even alluded to when we were talking before is how I have seen how my life has layered itself. The thing that I loved about being a computer programmer Every day was, here's the problem. How do we fix it? And I liked that. I like to do that kind of thing. I am a problem solver. I don't like to just point out problems. Let's figure out how to fix it because otherwise you're just creating more problems, right? And not fixing anything. What I didn't realize though, was the skill set of here's the problem. How do we fix it? All these years later is what I love most about being a trainer. Each person that comes in has it their own unique physical issues and I think you've probably already noticed I'm more than somebody who actually just shows you how to move weights around. And we'll get to that at some point, maybe, which is fine if we don't. But I take an interest in each person and, hey, what's going on at work? How are you managing some outside activity and how's going on with your kids? Are you getting time with them? And it's really each person has this unique set of situations that they have to navigate and figure out how to still make. I have two catchphrases, healthiest choice in the moment and consistent mindfulness. Those two things right there are the basic fundamental things for behavior change. Our brains are so crazy in the way that they work. And that whole expression of stuck in a rut is like an actual thing. 
So to change your behavior, you have to consciously, consistently stay mindful, right? Am I moving towards where I want to go? Or am I on autopilot and just riding out right now? Which sometimes autopilot can be the healthiest choice in the moment. Sometimes we don't always have to be 100% go, right? Sometimes a 10 minute walk every day is better than being all stressed out about having to get to the gym because my kids are sick and this and that. But you know what? I can go outside for 10 minutes and get some deep breaths. So that's where all the years of being in this industry and all the different people I've come in contact with and I'm an observer and I pay attention and I just have a crazy memory for things. People are always like, how the hell do you remember that? I don't know. I just do. And I'm like, that was so long ago. Well, it just comes to me. I've been able to just put all of those pieces together to figure out what are the things that work for this person or that person. And I, think and it, I just love it. What else would I like? What else would I do with myself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I stand around. I tell people what to do with their bodies and their lives. It's perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's important because even for me, I know that for some people, having somebody that will shadow <laughs> behind you and be able to help you to make sure you're doing the right things is really important. I know for me as being a coach myself in a completely different manner than a physical trainer, I have to worry about or the people that I'm working with. Are they overwhelmed? Are they having a lot going on in their lives? Do I know that I need to push back in terms of maybe they're being a little resistant, but knowing how far I can go with that or easing up and knowing when to press the right buttons because it's all about reading that person too and being able to understand how that all works, especially with life coaching, which I do. It's all about that. And I know I've had people that I've even talked to. I know they have struggles with trying to have that with what they actually set out to do and what they actually try to achieve. With all that said, Jen, this leads into my next question I have because there are millions of you, right? Billions of you out in the world training. And I've had already a couple of fitness trainers on this show that have talked about what their approach is. For me, I feel like the biggest thing, especially when it comes to fitness, is making sure that you truly understand that person is that you're working out with or helping you get that direction. Do they actually give a care in the world about you? And I've had really bad experiences with people, not the current gym where I'm at, where I have had that experience. They are removed. I'm more of a number. My question more specifically is this. What do you do differently than, say, another trainer or another type of company that I would get from you? In other words, what do you bring to the table that other people should pay attention to? I am always fascinated when I get a new client. So I'm just going to lay out how I do things from the second you walk in the door. This is how it goes. You contact me and I always make you start with a consultation. I want to meet you face to face. I want to see how you move. How do you stand? How do you walk? I am assessing you from the second that you walk in because you are going to put your body and most likely your emotions and your life in my hands. I want to see you in person and meet you, tell you about myself. The consultation always starts with, I ask the person about them. This is the key to anything in life. You always direct the attention to the other person. If you're always worried about you, you're never going to learn anything and you're never going to get anywhere. The only way I can help somebody is if they're willing to open up to me about what is the actual reason you're here. So my question to them is, tell me your story. Was there a medical thing that just happened that you needed to get some help with? Are you coming out of physical therapy and looking for some direction? Are you maybe just sick and tired of being sick and tired? Like, what is it that made you decide now is the time to do something? And you usually get a very emotional, either this physical thing happened, I went through a divorce and I just need to feel better about myself. I know that I have issues with food and I need to start exercising, which I will throw this out here because one of the things I have heard about myself is 
I make sure that people understand what the scope of practice of a personal trainer is. We are not permitted to give specific nutrition advice as personal trainers. So when you start to look for whoever it is that you're going to work for, please make sure that you ask them for their certifications for advice to make sure that they are actually certified to give that to you. I am not saying anything against trainers. We are absolutely allowed to give tips and tricks and make recommendations based on the guidelines out there. Unfortunately, what happens sometimes, people will make recommendations not understanding what medicines people are on, what other medical things that have happened to them. For example, women with breast cancer, you don't recommend a soy-based protein. So as the person looking for a trainer, you want to go vet us as much as it behooves us to meet you to see what we're working with. So the consultation starts with you tell me about you. And then we talk about any medical issues, any joint back issues, knee pain, right? I ask all the questions. Are you ever in a car accident? Did you fall out of the tree? People forget stuff, right? So what I want to know, is there something going on in your body that could possibly restrict some kind of movement that I may ask you to do? Then I explain how my training works. Everybody starts with a workout-based consultation because you're paying for it. So I want you to get an exercise. I want you to get a workout in. But I am the kind of trainer, I would rather give you 10 things that are too light than ever give you one thing that is too heavy. I always start with a baby step approach. What I have found in my personal life is we are inundated with this message of big sweeping changes. You have to do everything all at once or it's not going to work. Well, I'm really sorry to tell you if any of that worked, we would all be supermodels. Right. If, <laughs> yeah. If, if I look at my super that, bottle body. Right. Well, but you know what I'm saying, Josh, if anything, yeah. the diet and fitness industry, uh, exercise industry sold you actually worked. Wouldn't we all be doing much better because who doesn't take pills, potions and things to make their life better? My point is I learned back in 2018 to start at the opposite end of the spectrum. If you're not doing anything, a half an hour a week is better than nothing. Right. And then you come for that half hour a week. And I say to you, hey, listen, in the next week, I want you to get two 10 minute walks in. It's not about the 10 minute walks. It's about starting to make yourself accountable to get intentional activity. And here's the most beautiful thing that I love to explain people in the consultation. We all know the downward spiral. And as a woman who has had eating issues most of my life, for a lot of us, especially women, we a piece of cake so we feel bad about that so we eat another piece of cake so we feel bad about that and as we eat in the third one we're like well crap i don't want anybody to know i ate this much cake so we usually finish it right or we hide <laughs> it or something like that because we don't want people to think badly of us why that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard but anyway the opposite end of that is true you never realize how good it feels to feel good until you start feeling good So one 30 minute session a week where I encourage you to, hey, this week, let's drink a little bit more water. We don't have to change anything else this week. You come see me once, you drink one extra bottle of water a day. Then when I see you next week, now we're going to add in a walk or two. And so people can very slowly start to incorporate all these better, healthier mindsets, choices, whatever it is we're dealing with that specific person. And then they're starting to feel successful instead of going, well, shit, I did that diet for two and a half days, which is about how long they last. And now I'm back to eating chips and Subway and going into sheets and getting MTO cheese dogs because they're delicious, right? But what if in exchange of that, what if we start just making a good breakfast every day? You can do the same thing the rest of the day for a while, but let's make breakfast a good habit. Let's look at our week across the board. Instead of trying to be perfect all day long, which you will never do, I don't care who you are, I don't care how disciplined you are, you're gonna eat a Hershey kiss, right? It happens. But what if we just kinda like look at the breakfast time and get something good going there? Or maybe breakfast isn't your issue. Maybe sleep is your issue, right? So maybe we attack that first. But let's just work on one little thing at a time so that you don't feel overwhelmed Because as you start to incorporate these little things, you're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. My kids and I went and rode our bikes for half an hour this weekend. We haven't done that in three years. 
that's what I want to tell people. That's what I want. That's what I bring to the table. I think that may be a little bit different than some other places. And I'm very lucky that I have so many people that want to come and hear what I have to say that I get to do this all day, every day, right? That's amazing to me. I think that's always important that we have that conversation <laughs> with ourselves of not only overcoming what we might have as thoughts about, well, I don't know if these people might want to come and see me, but to actually take that extra step to say, you know, I do have something of value because I've been on this journey. I do want to share it. And that's been something of me that I've been going through to realize that there are unlimited gifts in this opportunity that we have. Jen, we're at the end of our time, but before we wrap up, I want to give you the last few minutes to pitch your business, where you're located at, how can people find you, what are some of the things that you're offering? This is your last few minutes. I would love for you to close us out. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. This was absolutely a pleasure. Hopefully you have some room when you come into some more time to fit me back in. I'm sure we can find many more things to talk about. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> as i said i am a personal training studio it is called workout with jen and you can find me at that website workoutwithjen.com that's two n's by the way yes facebook and instagram are the same workout with jen both with the two n's we, we are located at 4801 east trindle road in mechanicsburg and when i say we one of the things that has been such a blessing for me moving to this second studio is it has allowed me the opportunity to have other trainers here as my business has grown and I have gotten to the point where I unfortunately have not been able to take new clients for the last couple of months, but it's a great problem to have in this industry. It's given me the opportunity to give other trainers the chance to start where I did, working out of somebody else's facility. Strength training equipment is a little on the pricey side, so when you have access to a facility like this, we have a, about a 1,000 square foot training floor and it is all one-on-one. -on -one, so it would be you and a trainer. You would sit down for a consultation and then they would discuss your health and fitness goals and how they can best assist you in meeting them. Scheduling is all done one-on-one -on -one by appointment only. Again, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our time together. I really want to say this as we close this out is that there are people that we need in this world that not only help us to achieve what we really want, but they got to give a damn. And I feel like you give a damn about not only the people that are walking through the door. And I don't normally swear, but that is something that I feel I walk away with this knowing that I can go to someone no matter where I'm at in my life and feel confident in not only the things that I can achieve with people that actually intentionally care, but they also want to see who I can become, not just in the physical side, which is your main goal, but there's the indirect goal of being able to have that emotional connection and have that story of success and you share that with them. Jen, thanks for being on Speaking from the Heart. And I definitely appreciate all those things that you have shared with your heart today with our audience and that you continue to do what you do because it's incredible work. And I'm really happy that you spent some time to talk about that with us. Thank you so much. I am very lucky to get to do this every day and I do not take that for granted. I know what you're doing right now. You're eyeing up that cake that you bought. Because you listened to this episode and you had to pause it in order to be able to consume and enjoy it because you thought there would only be one slice. But there were many more slices that came after that, and now you're embarrassed. You didn't want to do all that, but you know that maybe you can work on something in terms of a better habit so that you never do it again. I think, if anything, that line and even the ad-libbing that I did with my wonderful improv skills certainly exemplifies Jen's episode in which I really enjoyed getting to know a lot more about not only the things that she has done in her life, but how she's gotten to here and just the incredible joy of passion and the ability to just keep pushing forward no matter what, because it is not just about the journey that we're on, 
but it's about what we want people to see from ourselves, the best version of ourselves, that is. And I think that really it's about finding that Karen in our lives. No, not the bad Karens, but the good Karens that find someone who notices and cares about you and wants to move you ahead no matter what through their presence, through their smile, and through their connection that they have with you. I think that Jen wants to exemplify those sort of values, and I love that she talked about that to the point that really it creates a life lesson for all of us that it doesn't matter what somebody's going through. It's about always being able to be there with your smiling face, being able to take care of some of the things that need to be taken care of, especially if it even involves your physical fitness. But that's the thing. Sometimes it can be very tough for somebody to go in every day and have that sort of attitude, which is something I even pressed during this interview. Jen, how did you even make that happen? What is it that you have? Is it a special potion that you drink? Is it something that you just get influenced from listening to meditation tapes? Is it something that you sleep on and then you just wake up every day feeling this magical way? It's not a unicorn. This is Jen. And she definitely was not faking it for anyone or even me, for that matter, when it came to being able to be that influence for somebody that typically might not have that influence in their lives. Because it's really about learning what stories people have. In many episodes, I have talking about the difference between facts and stories. And that's something that even for us, If we are able to create some of those opportunities to really show and understand what stories people are telling, we might be able to get to the heart of really why they think the way they do. But it's about working in the right environment. And I think that Jen is building that sort of quote-unquote empire within Mechanicsburg. Some people might want to go to Jen and work out with her because of that smile, because of that connection, because of wanting to know more about that person that she's working out with. And I think that's what we need to take away, is that it isn't about fitting in, it's about believing. It's not about having just joyful contentment, but about understanding that we can learn from those experiences so that we can continue to have joyful contentment. And there's a very big difference between those two concepts. We can fake it and continue to fake it for as long as we possibly can, thinking that we have everything together in our lives, having that rich lifestyle, living in the most expensive house, with the most expensive car, with the most expensive items in the house, including having the most latest stereo systems, video game equipment, podcast equipment for even people like me. But do you think I really live in a castle? Do you really think that I isolate myself because of many successes that I've had? No. And that's exactly what Jen does too. She defies the odds instead. We can be rich when it comes to the financial security, but what really is the currency of life is being able to have the stories, the life lessons, the ability to work and be able to surround yourself in a most positive environments in order to understand why people are the way they are. But can we think of what the small things are that we can really value? Those are the things that Jen counts as many blessings in her life, especially with many of the choices that she has been faced with and how she has overcome the odds with even her own weight loss, which I was not kidding. The photo that she showed me shows a dramatic transformation of the person that used to really struggle to somebody that really thrives. But it's about making those healthy choices. Those healthy choices are not very easy to do, especially if we have to continuously be in negative space, to be in a place where the dark corners or the recesses where we often hide in are really the comfort that we enjoy the most. Can we find ways in which we can push ourselves? 
but also know that sometimes we might need to retreat. And I think that this episode makes a unique distinction between some of the things that we've even covered about going full steam ahead. Because let me clarify, if it wasn't clear, it isn't always about moving full steam ahead. It's about balance. No, not on the balance beam, trying to figure out whether you can stay on and move one foot in front of the other. I'm talking about the balance that we have between work and life, being indoors all the time rather than being outdoors, being able to experience what life has, being able to say, are these the things that we shouldn't be doing? Should we really be eating that third slice of cake? And if you are eating that third slice of cake as you continue to listen to this episode, put the fork down. Instead, listen to what I have to say now. Jen is one of those people that will help you to put that cake away and to make sure that you pull out those vegetables, those fruits, and also take a smaller slice of the cake to have for later. Because we all are surrounded with those choices and we know that we're going to indulge with them. We know that those are vices. We are human. We are going to fall on that sword again and again and again. And we know that we shouldn't be beating ourselves up, but we are. We are. We are. And it continues to make it more painful and more terrible and more exciting so that we know that if we continue to hide it, nobody else has to know about it. And we know that we can get away with it every single time. Are you really getting away with it? Are you really changing your life? It's all a matter of understanding what you can potentially do. And I think Jen understands what she could potentially do. She moved from a programming career in the computer industry to something in which she programs humans instead. But not in a way to manipulate or influence or to artificially change things because that doesn't work. The fitness industry has proven that time and time again with the countless sort of fads, the South Beach diet, Weight Watchers. Sometimes those programs work, sometimes those programs don't. That magic pill that you swallow isn't necessarily going to take you to another universe, especially in the Matrix. It's just a perceived reality. But what you can do is just be surrounded by people that love and care, and they generally want to see you have success. That is what this is all about. Time and time again, I have always said that it's about finding the people that we want to surround ourselves with and be encouraged. If you find that having that piece of cake is a lot more convincing instead of having that Karen, that's your choice. Live your life to the fullest. If it's okay to just be working and not surrounding yourself in a negative environment and pushing yourself down time and time again to not have those life lessons, again, your prerogative. But we need to have joyful contentment. We need to believe that we can ultimately achieve the impossible because it isn't impossible. It is possible. And all it takes is just being willing to say to yourself that you are worthy. You can do this. You can share in all the successes, whether they are artificial or natural. But all it means is that you're able to open your mind to a whole new alternative reality. And I know that you have what it takes. All of us have what it takes because we are capable of learning. Thanks for listening to episode number 40 of Speaking from the Heart, and I look forward to hearing from your heart very soon. Thanks for listening. For more information about our podcast and future shows, search for Speaking from the Heart to subscribe and be notified wherever you listen to your podcasts. Visit us at www.yourspeakingvoice.biz for more information about potential services that can help you create the best version of yourself. See you next time.